Home Alone is my favorite Christmas movie. I'm not sure why, maybe because Kevin reminds me of younger myself, always getting in trouble, but it just gives me so much satisfaction to see a young boy taking over and outsmarting grown-ups. But if you are a parent, you remember, I bet, the first time you left your child home alone. Now, these days, when you have smartphones, you can check on them all the time. When I was growing up in Poland under communism, not only we didn't have a smartphone, we didn't have a phone in my home. So it was an act of faith on my parents' side to leave me home alone by myself. I admit there was no major fires or accidents, well, with the exception of one small fire, that ever happened when I was left home by myself. I only broke my arm, my leg and head once, but other than that, it was a good experience. Growing up and becoming responsible on your own, not having a babysitter to watch every single moment, not having a mother or father to annoy you with do this, do that. I enjoyed being home alone. When my parents were going out for a wedding or for other reasons, this was a great time for me to rule the house all by myself. My parents would always give me instructions how to behave, what to do, and what not to do when I was left by myself. They couldn't leave me numbers to call, remember, no phones yet, but my instructions were very clear and there was heavy penalty if I crossed them too many times. And in many ways, I compare St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians as such instructions left for a child or children home alone. For the next few weeks, our second reading will be always taken from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Corinth was one of the cities where Paul was a successful missionary. When he arrived there, he set up a church, a community of believers, and after a long time of living with them, preaching to them, being their pastor for many years, he finally moved on to start another church in another city. He left children home alone. And he is leaving them a long list of instructions, what to do and what not to do. Because when he was traveling different cities, messengers would arrive and say, Paul, your kids and Corinth are going crazy. They are doing this and that. They forgot what you taught them. Could you please bring them back in order? So we know that Paul wrote several instructions for people in Corinth, reminding them how to behave, what to do or what not to do. There are at least three or four such letters that Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Unfortunately, only two survived until our days. So in our Bible, we have 
1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. We know they are more than just two. If you find them, you may get a Nobel Prize. But the children left home alone were getting in trouble. All the lessons, all the instructions that Paul tried to convey to them were almost forgotten. Well, what do you expect? Were you ever left home alone? You know that this is the best time to get in trouble. When there is no parents, no babysitters, the life is yours. So it was the case with the church in Corinth. Not long after Paul left, they became infighting among themselves. Some of them were saying, hey, I am more important than you because Paul chose me to be the new pastor. The others were saying, hey, I can speak in tongues, so I am more important than you. Someone else would say, oh, no, 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 I have the gift of healing, so I can overpower all of you. The church in Corinth was one big mess. That's why it's so interesting to look at the letter as the instructions for children who, left, who were left home alone. Today's second reading is just three first verses. In these first three verses, Paul says, What's up, people? I am Paul, called by God to be an apostle. And I and Sosthenes, we are writing to you because you are called by God to be the church of God. In two sentences, Paul manages to use the word called twice. He says, I am called by God to be an apostle. And you, by the way, are called by God to be the church. I have a calling and you have a calling. And you better behave yourself in accordance to that calling. You have not been called to go crazy and wild and have Mardi Gras every day of the year. You have been called to be the church of God. And in the next 10 chapters, Paul will explain what it means to be called to be the church of God. And I don't want to go too deep into the next chapter because then you will stop coming to church for a few weeks <laughs> to be continued. But if you were to be left alone home today, I want you to remember what happens in the gospel. John the Baptist is saying, there is someone bigger coming after me. I am baptizing you with water, but the one who was before me, who is bigger than I am, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And I think that's one of the most fundamental messages you can leave your children when you are allowing them to stay home by themselves, or perhaps when they are going off to college, when you can't control them anymore, when you can't watch what they are eating and drinking every day. Have you had any kids go to college? If you experience that, you know what a traumatizing experience it is. You are sending them off on their own. So you want to give them one final advice. 
Don't smoke pot, right? At least not too often. Don't drink, not too often. Behave yourself. So what John is leaving us with today is there is someone bigger than you. There are things in life that are bigger than you. There are causes in life that are bigger than us. You see, as a child, especially as a teenager, you think you know everything, your parents know nothing, and you hate them. That's why this gospel is important. Because we are reminded that there are bigger things in life than ourselves. Sure, it's important to have food, to have drink, to have fun, and all these things. But because we are left home alone today, the message that John and Paul are leaving us with is don't be so self-centered. Don't focus your life only on your own advancement. There are things, there are people, there are causes that are bigger than you. If I was to leave you alone at St. Stanislaus tonight, if bus strikes me on the street after the mass is over, this is what I would like to leave you with. There are things, there are causes, and there are people bigger than you. Amen.